to say I'm an everyday player last year. And now he's real comfortable in his shoes. Tough to strike out. He's only struck out eight times. Sprays the ball around. Hits the breaking ball. Two run homer by Ty France. And he continues to just rock here in Seattle. What planet is he on right now? He is unbelievable. That was crushed. What a monstrous evening for the Mariners' first base. There's no stopping Ty France right now. He's making this look really easy. Yeah, and this dude is absolutely rolling. We're lucky enough to welcome him in as the AL co-player of the week. One of the hottest hitters on the planet right now, Ty France. All right, Ty. You've been named the co-player with uh, Miguel Cabrera. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Yeah, he had his 3,000th hit this week, and I'm sure you're following that one. But, Ty, how special is it to be mentioned in the same breath as a future Hall of Famer? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, that's a huge accomplishment. He's been doing this a long time. And, um, you know, this was my first ever, you know, Player of the Week honor. So to, you know, share that with him is pretty cool for me. Um, you know, it's something I'll, I'll remember forever. Ty, man, you've been raking for a little bit now, even going back towards the, the end of last season. Uh, I'm wondering from you coming over from the Padres, has there been something that's changed or something that's clicked for you to get you going this hot? Um, I wouldn't say anything like, you know, mechanically or physically or anything. Um, it's just more being able to be out there every day and, you know, have that everyday role. Um, in San Diego, I was coming off the bench and trying to learn how to do that, and it's tough. Um, so once you just, you're able to be in the lineup every day and get, get that, you know, consistency, um, you're able to kind of go out and just play your game. And I think that's what's been the biggest difference for me over here is just playing every day and, um, showing up to the field and knowing that I'm going to get four or five at bats tonight. Hey, Ty, you were a 34th round draft pick, if I'm correct. I'm curious sort of how that shaped your experience and whether that's something that still motivates you today. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I think my entire baseball career, I've kind of gotten looked over. You know, there's nothing that really, like, stands out about me as far as, like, you know, I can't – I'm not the fastest, I'm not the strongest, you know, I'm not the best defender. Um, so I feel like my you know, high school, collegiate, minor league career kind of got you know, semi looked over. Um, so I've had to kind of prove it at every level. And um, you know, it's kind of got me to where I am today. And it's something you know, I'll use my entire career. What's up, Ty? This is Keith. Now, I know this isn't a skill. And I know it definitely isn't fun. But you get hit by a lot of pitches. Uh, is that a part of your game now? Yeah, I knew you were going with that. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's it's something that I kind of learned. I don't want to say learned how to do in college, but it's just you were praised for getting hit and not getting out of the way in college. Um, so it's just kind of something I've carried with me throughout, you know, for, from that from that time on until now. And um, you know, it's not the smartest thing to do. It hurts, but um, you know, I didn't really walk a lot last year, so um, you know, being able to get on base that way and you know help my team out that way. Um, you know, that's kind of just part of my game and who I am. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to back off the plate. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ty, going back to college, you went to San Diego State and played under Tony Gwynn, which is an honor I itself. I went to UNLV and played against San Diego State all the time back when Steven Strasburg was the everyday, uh, every Friday night guy. So tell me a little bit about playing under Tony Gwynn and what did you learn most from him? Yeah, it was pretty special. Um, you know, one of my favorite things about Coach Gwynn was when you show up to San Diego State as a freshman, um, you walk on campus as an 18-year-old kid, um, and you're just like, whoa, that's Tony Gwynn. And he did a very good job of just making it seem like he's Coach Gwynn. He's not some, you know, San Diego legend. He's not, you know, the greatest hitter on earth. He's just your coach. He's there to help help you and get you better and get you to that next level. And that's one thing I really appreciated. Um, and then, you know, he's just a bag of knowledge. He's got – he had so much to talk about hitting. And, um, you know, it was something as simple as, you know, get in position, take your best swing. That's all you can control. And, um, you know, I still – when I'm, I'm struggling, that's what I go back to. Um, just simplify hitting as much as you can. And, um, you know, just as far as, like, life stuff, just do all, do all the little things right. You know, take care of all the little things and um, just be a good person, basically. Um, that's awesome. you know, he was one of the best best humans I've ever met, and you know I was very fortunate to uh, you know be able to be in his life. 
Well, I can just hear the emotion there in your voice. What a special experience and opportunity there for you, Ty. Uh, speaking of special, though, the atmosphere back home in Seattle looks like it's carried over from late last season. We had the believe signs. It, it's so electric there that actually your new teammate, Jesse Winker, <laughs> said uh, this place is basically the electric factory. You now have the T-shirts. How would you describe that atmosphere? Yeah, it's it's something I've never experienced before. Um, just feeling the whole stadium shake when they're cheering for you is, you know, it's pretty special. Um, Seattle Seattle fans, they, they love their sports and, um, you know, we're, we're playing well right now. So for them to come out and, you know, support us the way they have been. Um, going back to last year, like we wouldn't have been in that spot without them. They, the last week of the season was so memorable and incredible. Um, so for them to show up the way that they have for us, you know, it's only fair that we give them something in return and um, you know we're playing our, our tails off for them. All right, you can't see this, but we're going to show some video of you having, I think, a little bit of fun with Stephen Kwan in spring training uh, <laughs> when he got to first base, maybe trying to push him off the bag for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, first of all, what was his reaction? And second of all, just who's been the most fun base runner to sort of get to know over there at first base? Um, so when that happened, um, actually he, he got a hit, um, we got to first and <laughs> yeah, right. Um, uh, got a hit, got to first and, um, you know, it was one of my first times seeing him play and I told him, I was like, dude, I, I really like your swing. Like you got a good approach. You, you know, you barrel the ball up, it, you know, it looks nice. And then he's like, as he's saying, thank you, they pick off <laughs> and his, his foot slipped out from under him. And I didn't know that at the time. Um, so I didn't put a tag on him, and then I hear him crawling back to the base. I was like, oh, you know, and then I, that's when I was started messing with him back. But, yeah, I, you know, this this game's hard. Um, it, it could really, you know, beat the crap out of you. So um, I do what I can to just loosen up, lighten up, and, you know, make make it as fun as I can. And, um, you know, it's, it's very unlikely for a guy to get to first base and, him just be a bad person. I've, I've not met one bad person in this game. Um, you know, there are some guys who take it serious and, you know, need to focus, and I, which I totally understand, so I, I, I leave those guys alone. But for the most part, um, you know, I, I talk to everybody. It's uh, Our coaches yell at me for it, but, you know, it's just who I am. And, um, you know, I, I, I really enjoy getting to meet all the guys and, you know, get to know them. Um, I, there's so many that stand out. Um, you know, I can't just I can't just pick one guy. You're just like asking them about their day, about the weather. What are you guys talking about over there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, baseball, life. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of guys who you know get to first and just ask me how I'm doing, how my mm -hmm. day's going, just little things like that. And uh, you know, it, it it means a lot. Um, you know, a lot of the times we're away from our families for a long time, and you know, like people just don't they they come to the games and just watch us. They don't really ask us how we're doing or anything. So. Um, you know, we, we understand each other and, you know, it's it's a brotherhood and, um, you know, just getting to meet all the guys and, you know, let, share that experience with them is, is pretty cool. Oh, actually, a, a funny uh, tidbit about that. My good friend Doug Flynn, who used to play for the Reds and then obviously the Mets, he kind of went on and played north of the border. Um, him and Pete Rose had a conversation at first base where he was introduced to his wife later that night. They were setting up the date oh. while they were Aww. at first together. How cute is that? Yeah, Hannah, we're real people uh, oh. out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's setting, setting the bar real high for the kind of conversations he should be having yes. at first. Do you have any single friends that you could be getting the base <laughs> runners out with? Yeah, I'll, I'll start asking around for you guys. <laughs> no, hey, you kind of cued this question up. You said this game is tough. You talk to guys about life. Baseball is life. Sometimes you can have some tough days, but you have some positive energy on your shirt. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, the guys over at Rake Baseball Company, they created some shirts. This one says no bad days, which is like the hang loose sign and a little baseball in the middle. Um, they made, you know, some good vibes only shirts. And, um, you know, it. That's, I feel like as baseball players, uh, you know, it's one way to, like, just express yourself. They they give us T-shirt after T-shirt, and, um, you know, guys love it. We have the uh, – Winker made the Electric Factory one now, or, um, you know, with him and JP jumping in the air. So, like, you know, I feel like baseball in general is a, a BP T-shirt kind of. It's <laughs> yeah. going yes, that it direction. Is. And 
there's there's cool shirts all over the league. So yeah, this one's pretty cool. I'm surprised they found one that fit those pipes, my dude. I know. You look, bro. <laughs> Only arms. Only arms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, the like Johnny that. Bravo works. It's totally fine <laughs> in this particular instance. Uh, before we let you go, Ty, uh, you're in Seattle, the Pikes Place Market. Have you done the fish toss yet? Too cliche. No, I haven't. Do I haven't done that one yet. Um, I've seen a few guys do it. Um, it looks. It looks fun. I mean, I'd. I'd be interested in doing it, but I you know, haven't. Haven't done it yet. All right, you can add it to the bucket list. You can post it on social, and we will show it here on Off Base. Ty, we appreciate you joining us. Good luck down the stretch, and, uh, yeah, we hope to have you back on the show sometime soon. Yeah, of course, anytime. Thank you. I appreciate it.